Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Schwartz. I'm the founder and CEO of Glue. I also lead the Janssen Project at the Linux Foundation, which is an enterprise class digital identity platform. And today I'm going to be talking to you about digital public infrastructure. But before I do that, I want to say thank you to Open UK, Amanda Brock, and all the volunteers for making this possible and enabling us to get together in London. Great job, guys. Thank you. And um, so let's start with definitions because this talk might be acronym laden. So as you might have guessed, a DPG is a digital public good. DPI is digital public infrastructure. The DPGA is the Digital Public Goods Alliance. UNDP is the United Nations Development Program, which was chartered in the 60s. The SDG and SGG is a UNDP Sustainable Development Goal, of which there are 17. So let's just remind ourselves why we're here. The UNDP's mandate is to end poverty build democratic governance, rule of law, and inclusive institutions. And this next part is really important. We advocate for change and connect countries to knowledge, experience, and resources to help people build a better life. This is a, from their website, directly from their website. And SDG 9 specifically aims to build resilient infrastructure promote sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. Now you can probably connect the dots about why digital public infrastructure is important um, to SCG9, but I'll, I'll let uh, Yoda Hisa Michael say this when he says that the digital public infrastructure, such as our national digital ID system, is foundational to reach and deliver services to everyone in Ethiopia. And let's just put a little star there and, and point out that digital public infrastructure and national digital ID system um, is, is mentioned because we're going to talk a little bit about um, digital ID systems later. So what is the DPGA? It's, a, it's not a UN organization. It's a multi-stakeholder UN endorsed initiative that facilitates the discovery and deployment of open source technologies, bringing together countries and organizations to create a thriving global ecosystem for digital public goods and helping to achieve the SDGs. Sorry for just reading that, but it's quickest way. The DPG goals. So in a lot of ways, these goals are a roadmap for the rest of this talk, because spoiler alert, I'm going to tell you how the DPGA meets some of these goals right now in this slide. So goal number one is to vet DPGs and make them discoverable. And they're going to do this by creating a registry or listing of digital public goods open source software. To build an ecosystem to promote adoption of DPGs. To inform and motivate governments to adopt DPGs. To build local know-how about DPGs. Now to inform governments, they're going to align with another organization called GovStack to provide, I guess, blueprints or or playbooks or what they call building blocks for IT infrastructure. And they're going to motivate governments um, by a, through a campaign called 50 and 5, which we'll talk about in a few slides. It's an initiative to sign up 50 governments in five years and get them to in, 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 integrate digital public infrastructure. So in order to understand any organization, you need to know who's behind it. The board of the DPGA has the UN, um, UNDP and UNICEF are both UN organizations. NORAD, which is the Norwegian Economic Development Agency, and BMZ, which is the German Economic Development Agency, and EKSTEP, which is a foundation funded by the founder of Infosys in India, and Sierra Leone is, is on the board. Um, these are some of these are the countries who are currently members, and then these are some of the donors. Now, the Janssen Project, which I, which I lead, registered and was approved as a DPG and were listed in the registry. And this on the left is an example of what that looks like. This is our, our Janssen Project registry listing. Um, 136 projects have been approved um, and are listed in the DPG registry. 
and they give you a nice little chart here I guess if you're looking at the registry these are our github check-ins I guess and you can see um, you know we're really busy maybe this project not not as much now these are the questions that actually get asked um, from, to the product owners and these are the exact questions um, is the digital solution relevant to one of the SDGs does it use a open source approved license is the ownership clearly defined is it platform independent are there docs is it not just collecting a bunch of PII um, does the digital solution adhere to standards and best practices and does the digital solution take steps to anticipate, prevent, and do no harm? If you can answer yes to all these questions, you might be able to become a DPG. Now, let's move on to GovStack. Remember, GovStack, um, the GovStack Alliance, DPGA Alliance, is one of the ways that we're going to inform governments about how to roll out this, this DPI. So the goal of GovStacks, and this is from their website, is to help governments to build sustainable digital infrastructure, providing them with the tools and knowledge needed to scale digital transformation of public services. And if you're wondering who's behind GovStacks, well, it's some of the same players, actually. Uh, BMZ, who's also a board member of the DPGA, GIZ is the serv a service organization in in the German government. Actually, if you take BMZ and GIZ and just call them, let's just call them the German government, um, the, the government of Estonia, ITU, and something called the Digital Impact Alliance. And I looked it up and that's um, the donors to that are USAID, UN Foundation, FCDO, which is the UK Economic Development Agency. Um, thank you, um, thank you, UK. CETA, which is a Swedish Economic Development Agency, and of course the Gates Foundation, like they're everywhere in this space. They fund absolutely everything, it seems. Now, GovStack defines some building blocks. Um, I'll, I'll highlight three of these building blocks. Identity, which, which we mentioned is really key to this initiative. Um, payments, so how do you pay um, benefits to people? And info mediation, uh, just to give an example, um, in Ethiopia, there's like 100 donors and agencies all providing help, but they need a good way to share information with each other, I guess through some type of API mesh or and standard data schema. Now, the 50 and 5 advocacy campaign um, is, it fulfills the goal of um, motivating countries um, to, to adopt digital public infrastructure. Um, just reading um, verbatim, in five years, 50 countries have designed, launched, and scaled at least one component of their digital public infrastructure stack in a safe, inclusive, and interoperable manner. That one component is probably identity. Um, 12 countries um, have signed on to this initiative, and I think this is a really, really good place to start. I think it plays into the strength of, of this organization which is getting the leadership to understand the importance of this infrastructure. And we all know that without high level leadership um, supporting a project, it has absolutely no chance of succeeding. So this is super important. So with that background, um, you now sort of have the um, who, what, where, when, and why of, of digital public goods. So uh, I want to move into sort of my feedback as a DPG product owner and what are some of the challenges that I see the, the effort is facing. And I want to discuss these challenges um, by using an approach developed by John Wolpert. And he wrote this book called The Two-Butt Rule. Um, I have my copy right here. I suggest you all go to Amazon and buy your own copy. Um, it's a fun read. And, um, and I think you'll, you'll, you'll get some value out of it. And just to read you a little bit from um, the introduction, he says, um, overcoming seemingly impossible problems like rolling out digital public infrastructure to low and medium income countries, just saying, and creating truly innovative things depends a lot on how much momentum you can muster when turning bad ideas into good ones. And Let's go to the next slide. So the way that his system works is that we don't want to 
we don't want what's called a toxic culture of positivity. Um, what we want is people to voice their concerns, but we want them to voice their concerns in a way that maintains positive momentum. And the way that we do that is by encouraging people to not have two, one but, but two buts. So the first but is, but that won't work. And the second work, but is, but it would work if. So let's just apply this to our, our DPGA. And, um, and let's start here, because I, I think this will be a near and dear to your hearts. The, this effort is not going to work because the DPGA and its members think open source is free, as in free of cost, not the open source freedoms. But it would work if we use the registry to publish a unit of intrinsic value for each DPG, enabling open source products to fund maintenance and innovation. Now, we want to make sure that small countries pay less than big countries. So that's why I'm suggesting here we need a unit of intrinsic value, not necessarily a price. Um, for example, um, the unit of economic value for Janssen project is monthly active users, but maybe for an API gateway product, it might be transactions. So the unit of intrinsic value will change per project. But publishing the unit of intrinsic value, I think, sets the expectation that there is a way that we can measure value. And it's important to remember that um, I always say as a software product owner myself, there's the boring stuff and there's the fun stuff. The boring stuff is patching all those vulnerabilities. That has to be done. If that doesn't get done, you can't use the software. The, the end users of your product, when the next log4j happens, they want that patch tomorrow. Well, you need a team in place to make sure that they're ready to do that. So the boring maintenance needs funding. And then, of course, we need to fund innovation because technology is, is always moving and we can make the, the, the product better. And open source has been a very innovative way to develop software. That's one of the main advantages, but it doesn't happen for nothing. So my second, um, my second but, uh, it, but it won't work because the DPGA is not seriously engaged with the open source community and does not understand the nuances and diversity in the 4 million plus projects. So what I'm suggesting here is that um, perhaps the leadership should learn a little bit more about open source. A good place to start is by reading the open source law policy and practice book um, edited and collated by Amanda Brock and work to categorize open source in a way that's meaningful to its members. There's a lot of nuance in, in, in open source projects. We don't want to pick winners and losers, um, and, and, but we need to understand um, how, how these projects happen. But it's not going to work because GovStack doesn't actually have the expertise to advise low and medium governments on how to undertake digital transformation. This is a pretty hard job, but it would work if GovStack paid the best and brightest instead of asking for volunteers. Now, I think you see the problem right away. Um, so if we're going to advise low and medium country governments on how to affect digital transformation, we should approach this with a little bit of humility here. Um, you're here in the UK. I don't know how many of you know about the policy, the um, pensions dashboard, but I think this this IT project has, has cost around a billion pounds uh, here in the UK. I'm not even sure if it's delivered yet. So it's really hard to, um, to build digital public infrastructure for governments, um, even governments with a lot of funds and a lot of um, expertise internally are really challenged to do this. And we're not going to do this by asking for volunteers. Um, and in fact, if we only ask for volunteers, what's going to happen is that um, large organizations that could maybe contribute expertise will do so. But a lot of the expertise that we need is actually consultants and smaller businesses who don't have the resources to volunteer. And if we want to get them to help out on this critically important issue, we need to pay them. It's not going to work because the registry is not ensuring that this open source software is safe for governments to use. Um, but it would work if we reviewed and updated the questions. For example, the most important question is probably, how's the project governed? Is it a benevolent dictatorship or is a community governed? 
that's super important to know and and that question's never asked but that, that's just one example I, I think the questions really need to be revised it's not going to work because GovStack's current design for digital identity anoints a monopoly vendor and was not reviewed by a quorum of industry experts now of course i'm a I'm a domain expert in identity. This is my area. But remember, um, I want to, um, I mentioned that Yoda, he's a Michael, um, in his quote, he mentions digital identity as where they're starting. I think it's digital identity is really critically important because everything is hanging off it here. So we have to do a really good job. If we don't get this right, then the whole thing's not going to work. And I, so I, the current design um, is, is really, um, not going to work, um, but it would work if GovStack guidelines were restricted to which standards to use, maybe how to use them, i.e. profile the standards, and feedback was gathered through liaisons with leading industry organizations like the OpenID Foundation and others. And I want to make a point here. Um, so you've all seen Apollo 13, and you might remember a scene where they're trying to cobble together um, you know, some random parts to, to fix, um, to, to really save the crew. And Gene Kranz, um, the, this is his actual quote, not what he says in the movie, but he was a flight director of the Apollo 13 mission. And he said, let's solve the problem, people. Let's not make it any worse by guessing. And the point that I want to make here is that we can actually do harm because Whereas a company like Facebook wants to move fast and break things, the opportunity costs in government are much higher, and we really need to make sure that the these infrastructure recommendations we are making are well vetted. And I'll actually say one more thing about um, anointing a monopoly vendor. Um, to use another example, um, here in the UK, the Open Banking Foundation, or the, the Open um, Banking um, Implementation Entity, OB, was very careful that when they defined the standards, that they did not, that more than one product vendor could satisfy those standards because they wanted to make sure that there was an ecosystem and competition um, around the solution providers and, the, and it just wasn't one, one um, organization or vendor who could supply that. Um, so calls to action, um, if you're a DPG product owner, um, register your DPG or find someone to nominate you, I guess. Promote 50 and 5 in your country. So if you're, um, I, I think this is important because if we all work together here, uh, and, and this e applies even to European countries, I think if we work together and share experiences that we can, um, we can attack this, and it's not just low and, and medium income countries that are struggling here. I mean, for those of you who are Europeans, um, you're probably aware that there is a, a initiative to build new um, European identity decentralized wallet um, called the UD wallet. Um, so this isn't a problem that we've really figured out in the European Union or the, certainly not in the United States. Um, so let's all work together, and I think 50 and 5 is a good way to communicate that initiative to our leaders. Um, let's advocate for the DPI by voicing your concerns and suggesting solutions on LinkedIn. And I think LinkedIn is the right place here because now we don't have everybody, but I think we have a critical mass of interested parties, um, of leaders in the DPGA, of members, and of industry experts, and um, it's probably the the best imperfect uh, solution for a, a way to communicate. And I'm going to start this myself by uh, posting some of my uh, concerns and suggested solutions on identity. So thank you so much for your attention and attending today, and now I will take questions. <laughs>